Good morning. On today's Coffee and Cleaners, let's go through some newer Spencer literature. I have some selections here from the 20s, the 50s, the 90s, and this will be also late 40s, early 50s. So let's start from the beginning. The 1920s, this is a Spencer catalog, and this one was printed for the Chicago branch of the Spencer Turbine Company. So this would have been distributed to like the architects of the Palmer House or the Chicago Theater that had Spencer systems put in them. And this book gives a lot of information about the systems, but mixed in is a lot of examples of different types of buildings that have systems installed and I just am amazed at some of these just the size of some of these installations Cincinnati General Hospital 19 Spencer machines installed so very very uh, interesting to read through and uh, they they go into what makes the Spencer system different from other machines of the time, such as the reciprocating type where you had wet separators and chain drives and you had to, uh, you had to have multiple filtration stages because all the air going into the pump had to be clean, otherwise the pump would just get destroyed. So they, they make a great uh, sales point for not only the vacuum system in general, but also their brand. And there's a church. We have some hotels here. Anybody recognize any of these? We have more hotels. Got some office buildings, some banks, lots of schools, lots of schools. East High School in Cincinnati, which is now called Withrow, has three Spencer systems installed in it. I don't know what the status is, if they still use them, but in another publication, I think it was like the Heating and Ventilating Magazine, it talks about all the mechanical systems in, in uh, this high school. and. There, were, um, there was a double turbine system for the main part of the school, and then there was another unit in the gymnasium. And the double turbine was arranged so that you could have a certain number of operators running on one turbine, but then when another operator came online, when the vacuum fell in the system, because it wasn't moving enough air, that second turbine would, would uh, fire up. Very cool. Post offices, municipal buildings, apartment houses. Battle Creek Sanitarium. Westchester Biltmore Country Club. Look at that place. The Widener Library. There are some pictures online of the inlets in the Widener Library. Here, this one's late enough that the Chicago Theater is featured. So this will be from like the, the mid to later 20s because the Chicago Theater was built, well, in the mid 20s. The Tivoli Theater, that's another one in Chicago. Residence of A.M. Johnson, which is now a building, something to do with the, uh, with I think Northwestern University. And some of these mansions, like these Long Island ones, I don't know if this particular one, but a lot of these have been demolished. Because that's the thing you do when you're in a rich area and you yourself are rich and you want to have a beautiful new home while well, you buy somebody else's beautiful old home and you knock it down without taking the vacuum system out. Terrible. Terrible, terrible. Some of these very cool pictures showing all the different ways to use the system to clean all the surfaces in your lovely home. 
some examples of different machines. This was the one that you saw in houses a lot. Uh, this would have been one for small commercial buildings, and this would have been one for large buildings. This would have been rated for one operator. This could have handled, five horse could have handled two. Uh, when you got up to the seven and a half horse, like my machine that came out of Ashland Middle School that looks just like this, that could handle three operators. And when you get up to a 15 horse machine, now you're closer to six plus users that can be vacuuming simultaneously. So a lot of your theaters had these big, huge vacuum systems in them because they wanted to be able to turn that whole theater over quickly between shows. Some of the inlet valve styles, the recessed, the, the uh, flush mount. Details of the tools, not only what would come with the system standard, but also what was optionally available, special tools. Look at that, 24-inch bare floor tool. And this has some, uh, some text about the Spencer standards, which you would measure with the vacometer. And there's our vacometer. So that's that. This is 1920s. And similar publications were available in later decades, but this is just what I've got to share. This one is piping and valves. Let's see if there's a date on this. 563. Could this be from 1963? I suppose it could. All right, so the valves are the same, and you can see we're still installing with threaded iron piping at least per the diagrams. Uh, this silent valve, I ran into this in a hospital in the south side of Chicago, Mercy Hospital, um, which is now called something else and now doesn't have these in the lobby anymore, but they had like four of these in their lobby. And the idea was, you know, when you have a system running and you open the valve, it's a loud blast of air. And so in an area where that's objectionable, you open the flap, you plug the hose in part way, and then you open this little lever, and then you plug the hose in fully. So the airflow isn't there until after you've plugged the hose in. And then when you're withdrawing the hose, that little lever, spring-loaded, closes off before you withdraw the hose completely. So that's the silent valve. We have a floor valve here with a key. That's like a Tuac inlet. But this is obviously post Tuac. Type DA valve, see this is the, th this is bigger, but having it be flush is, is considered a little fancier. And these are inlets for larger st uh, size hoses. We have the vacometer, which is now being shown with a mercury gauge instead of a dial gauge. And this also shows equivalent so four inches of mercury is equal to just a little bit less than 55 inches of water lift. You know about that from my other videos. This goes into proper piping, proper versus improper. This is kind of cool. So like if you have several inlets below the lateral, this is how you do them so that the dirt, if it doesn't make it all the way up, doesn't fall all the way back down. Determination of pipe sizes. This, again, you know, they were really, by this time, they, they had basically abandoned the residential vacuum market, so they were all about the commercial multi-user systems where you had to size the pipe appropriately. And there's some, there's some science in doing that right. Loss of vacuum in inches of mercury for a hundred feet of hose for different different sizes, and um, you know Spencer was mostly using the inch and a half hose always. And speaking of hoses, here we go. So at this point, see, I was mistaken. This says '64, so these are both from the '60s. Bad Owen not checking dates before you start the video. By this time you could get a plastic hose 
and you could still get like pepper and salt medium duty these are what what had been offered with the systems just forever and ever and then they still had the special like oil resistant and steel hoses for boiler cleaning and stuff and uh, you have the specs for all these so you could really get exactly what you wanted for your application in this system and this goes into some detail about how to connect the tools with the wands with the elbow joints and these are interesting these hose bands they're supposed to prevent wear on the hose I don't know if I've ever seen that before besides in this catalog you've got some carpet tools different ones for wide slot narrow slot different widths tools for threads tools with a brush strip and it's kind of cool on the bigger size tools recommended for use with central system or large portables And your different floor tools, brushes, felt blades, rubberized fabric, squeegee tools, steel sides, plastic sides. Can you imagine using a steel bladed floor tool, just the noise it would make on a concrete floor? Rink tool. I believe they mean roller skating rink, not ice skating. Can you imagine that? A central Samboni. <laughs> No, that's for roller rinks. Sheepskin Deluxe. Venetian blind tool. Mail slot cleaning tool. And we've got all our hand tools here. And there's a dusting brush with a big sheepskin face. A sheep should be so lucky for its coat of wool to be made into a Spencer attachment. And it's interesting to see like they had a wall brush, but then they had a pipe and ledge brush with a center so that like if you were vacuuming pipes with dust covering them, well, the dust would get sucked in before it got swept off the pipes. Oven tool. So they really like if if you needed something special, they would make it for you. This one here, the nozzle with shutoff valve used for fur blowing. kinky and of course they make a larger size uh, tool set for two inch hoses and we will conclude with a more modern Spencer catalog this is not current but it's close to current. Spencer doesn't change very much from year to year. Uh, but you can see you can still get the brush uh, tools, the felt tools, the rubberized fabric, different sizes, 12, 15, and 20. It takes a lot of power to operate a 20-inch vacuum attachment effectively. Gulper with a built-in wand, the hand brush. At this point, because it was all commercial work, they make all the brushes out of nylon. And I kind of wish you could get one with horse hair because if you've ever used a nylon dusting brush, it's not the nicest thing if you're dusting, you know, furniture and not machinery. Those long crevice tools. Carpet tools. You can see this is mostly the same stuff. They're now offering plastic tools at this point. 
And so these would, the plastic tools would have been and continue to be made by a company called Tuek, which is sort of an offshoot of the Tuek that made the Tuek central vacuums. But Tuek is owned by Flexost and they no longer make vacuum machines, they just make attachments. And their wands, you can get different lengths, different materials, aluminum or steel. You can get wands for above the floor cleaning. This tool is kind of cool. So like imagine you have a, oh, the, a, a big bin full of stuff, whatever, junk, sand or shavings or something, material. So if you just take a wand and stick it in there, that'll cut off the airflow and it won't move the material. So this is a concentric tube gulper to allow air to flow from these holes down the tool and then you can you get airflow at the end that will pick the material back up and carry it away. You have these uh, hose swivels, some of them with shutoff valves, and they don't make a hose swivel with a shutoff valve anymore. You've got to you've got to either pick a hose swivel or you can get the shutoff valve, which I have, but you can't get them as a combo anymore because you know, reasons. And we have different selections of hoses. So like lightweight re wire reinforced PVC, that's like the, that's a vacuum hose like you would get on a, on a built-in vacuum. That's just your, I mean, you can still get that stuff anywhere. This is more like um, the car wash vacuum hose. It's crush proof. Uh, and then these are your Spencer specialty hoses that would be, um, this heavy duty plastic is a smooth, it's uh, really heavy actually, and uh, flexible-ish. But you can see where they recommend using these different hoses, and they grade the, um, the flexibility and durability. And we've got those old valves again, we've got some floor valves, locking valves, lots of schools use locking valves to prevent youngsters like me from messing with them. And there's the updated silent valve. They've concealed it all behind one flap and made it flush so that, you know, the thing doesn't get banged into in a hallway. And the vacuum slots, which are also discontinued, but these are a cool Spencer product that originated in the 50s when Spencer kind of gave up on people vacuuming their bare floors. And they said, fine, if you're going to use a dust mop, We'll make this thing for you that you can clean the dust mop. So it's basically a vac pan flush with the floor. Your system is running. And when you open, take that cover off, that dust mop size slot cleans the dirt off the mop as you run it over it. Very cool. There's one in a convent in the south side of Chicago. And the maintenance man called for a service call and said, we've got this old Spencer system and the, the nuns love it. We got to get it fixed. And I'm imagining these nuns schlepping vacuum hoses all over. But no, they had this. <laughs> and uh, the hose racks, I love the Spencer hose racks. They're just works of art. And that's that. So I hope you appreciated this look at some Spencer catalogs through the years 20s 60s through the that last catalog is going to be 80s maybe 90s happy vacuuming